Hey everyone, today I want to talk about the popular program ChatGPT and specifically how it can be used in a product management or product development setting to help you do your work faster. Basically, we're going to go through ideating, brainstorming new ideas, actually developing the product, and then testing that with users. So if you're unfamiliar, what is ChatGPT? ChatGPT is one of the latest projects from OpenAI, a research lab in San Francisco. It's one of the fastest growing apps of all time, having surpassed 1 million users just five days after its launch on November 30th, 2022. Essentially, ChatGPT is a chatbot program that is designed to have natural human-like conversations with people. It uses machine learning techniques to analyze input and generate appropriate responses. In fact, the last two sentences I just read to you were generated by ChatGPT with no edits. I just asked it to explain ChatGPT and it did the rest. I think we're quite a ways off from a general purpose AI. There are a lot of limitations to this language model, but within what it can do, it's pretty surprising what it can do well. And that's things like writing essays and songs, generating and analyzing computer code, or looking at data and summarizing it for you. ChatGPT is free for anyone to access. All you have to do is go to chat.openai.com and set up an account. And from there, you can start playing around with it. I will recommend a few things though. First, you need to be aware that its responses are not perfect. They can be really verbose, redundant sometimes, and even contradictory. And a lot of times it will present the data very confidently, but the data it presents will actually be incorrect. So you really need to tread lightly here. With that said, it can be useful for getting ideas and as a starting point for many of the things we're going to discuss today. If I can go on a tangent for just a moment, I think this chatbot style interface is actually going to replace what we think of as Googling in the near future. So right now, ChatGPT is pretty limited. It's not connected to the live internet, so it can't give you real-time information. But this type of model could work really well paired with live information because it's more interactive. I find oftentimes that when I'm Googling things right now, I'll just search for the name of the topic and then add Reddit to the end of my query because I find that the data on Reddit or Quora is often more insightful than just the general ad supported page rank results. And I think that this conversational matter is going to ultimately replace the single query Googling because it's more interactive and it can help you get to exactly what you want. That could come from Google. I would certainly hope that Google is working on something like this, but there's also an opportunity for other companies here. And tangent, what we want to look at is the state of ChatGPT today and how you can use it now for the topics of product development, product design, and product management. So I'm gonna fire up ChatGPT and get started. Okay, I'm here in my browser, and as you can see, I fired up chat.openai.com and logged in. And this is the default chat GPT interface. You've got your chat history on the left, although I've noticed recently that my history has basically disappeared. And in the middle, there are some suggestions of things that you can do with chat GPT to get started but I'm already thinking about the lens of product development here. So what I'm gonna do is start my query and I wanna get some ideas for products in a certain product area. So what I'm going to ask ChatGPT for is give me some ideas for products in the baby space. And let's see what it comes up with. What's interesting about it is it seems to understand natural language input quite well. I could give it a number of very similar queries in English and it would have no problem understanding what I'm trying to do most of the time. As you can see, it's typing out some examples and just something about the model without getting in too deep into it is the reason it types them out is it has to do with the way the language model works. 
it's actually generating the upcoming text based on what was said previously. So it doesn't compute the whole answer and give it to you. It's actually generating that answer on the fly as it's typing, so to speak. So let's take a look at the ideas that we got here. A baby monitor with night vision and temperature monitoring, portable baby rocker. A lot of these products have already been done. I didn't ask for anything unique. These are totally fair game features. I'm gonna ask it for a few more ideas. So I'm just gonna say any more ideas and it will keep throwing out more. And what's interesting about ChatGPT is it is contextually aware. So it will look at what you've asked previously and what it has said previously. And generally it will be able to continue with that line of context. This is where Google or any of the similar search engines today, the context can only be generated once and maybe filtered. This is totally conversational as an interface. Okay, it sounds like we got a few nice additional ideas. I'm just gonna pick one of these. So I think that this one is pretty interesting. I don't know too much about this product space and why the food temperature is so important, but I think it came up with a pretty interesting idea. I'm gonna copy this and I wanna say, I want to design the product and I'll just put it in quotes. Not sure if I need to do that. And then I will say, help me understand what I need to do to launch this product. And let's see what it comes up with. This is totally free form and unscripted by the way. So I did a similar post for a different product area on my blog, but I just wanted to see what chat GPT would come up with. And it's going a little slow, but it is generating something. As I see these results coming in, I feel like these are somewhat generic. They're generic steps that you would take for developing pretty much any product, but it actually is contextually aware because if you look at this testing and certification piece, this would really only be for this type of product, for a physical product used in the food space or in the baby space. So, you know, if it was a SaaS software example, this recommendation shouldn't be here. And in fact, I haven't seen this recommendation before for software products. So it's pretty interesting that even though this is just a very high level overview, it's got some good ideas of what you would do to build a product. Okay, what I'm gonna do is ask for some pain points from ChatGPT. Basically, what issues do parents have or babies have with eating cold food? I'm just gonna ask for pain points and see what happens. What's interesting is ChatGPT is talking about some of the concerns that people might have about a product like this, but it's not really talking about the actual user pain that a product manager or product designer would care about. I think we need to kind of back up and get it on the right path of what issues do people have around incorrectly heated food. So I'm just gonna start asking this question. You can type even while it's generating a response. What concerns do parents have around food temperature and their baby? One thing that you should be aware as you get these results is that they might be correct from a language perspective and there is some contextual awareness, but it's not always 100% factually true in terms of what's actually required in the market or what parents might actually think. So you still want to go out and do user research. But what's amazing about this is this has just generated a bunch of ideas that I probably would have taken a while to uncover in user research, such as maybe allergies. And I'm not sure how allergies and heat are going to trigger the allergy, but that could be something that comes up in research. So this is something that we can dive into further but I just wanna be clear that you still need to go out and do that one-to-one -one user research because if you don't, you're probably gonna miss out on some very important insights and potentially miss when you're developing a product. So we got food safety, comfort, digestion. I think that would probably be a big one. Nutritional value, okay, is the food bio available essentially? So a lot of good ideas here.
So I think that this is a pretty good starting point. We have an idea of what parents might be concerned about. Let's start to understand the personas of the parents that might be using a product like this. So I'm just gonna ask ChatGPT about the personas. So we're seeing some really interesting results come in here. The new parents who are just worried about everything, the health conscious parents. I think this is definitely one to zoom in on. They just want to make sure their baby is getting the most nutritious food based on their opinion of what is actually healthy. And then I think another one that might be relevant potentially is safety conscious parents because they don't want their baby consuming food that has been the wrong temperature that's unsafe. Although what's interesting is that the example given here is more about the product safety and not necessarily about the food safety. But pretty interesting ideas it's coming up with. I think this is pointing to, this is an ideation and brainstorming tool at this point in time, not a full tool that you would use to replace user research. So that's all good. I think we will take a few of these personas and go forward. And what I'd like to do is start to generate some product descriptions. So I'm gonna say, generate a one paragraph product description for, and let's pick a, let's pick the health conscious parent, the health conscious parent. And I'm just going to give it a little bit more context. This parent follows the paleo diet because maybe we're doing some very precise targeting and I'd love to see what ChatGPT comes up with. Oh, and we got a load failed. This does happen with ChatGPT sometimes. So what I'd recommend to do is copy your question and then click regenerate response. And if it still doesn't regenerate, basically what you need to do is refresh the page. And then you wanna go back into your chat history because if you don't, it's not going to use the previous context that you asked for, as far as I know. So let's go back into our chat history and then we will paste that question again. Sometimes it's gonna ask you to actually log in again. This is beta software. It's far from perfect. All right. It's targeting people with the paleo diet. It's talking about the perfect temperature of food, the accuracy, okay. BPA free is gonna be a big one for these people. If they're health conscious, ergonomics, maybe not the most important, but I think there are a lot of good ideas here. It could probably be copy edited. I think we probably wouldn't explicitly call them out, but just target them. This is quite good and quite time-saving compared to actually doing some copy yourself. You just need to edit it and come over it to get it to be where you want it to be. So let's maybe also generate a Facebook ad copy with the, for the same persona. So let's just see what happens. One thing I noticed here is a grammar issue. So again, you're going to need to copy edit, but the bigger thing is that this reads more like a YouTube ad or a TV or a radio ad and less like a Facebook ad, which has a very specific copy format. So I'm going to give it a little bit more guidance to get it to do what I want. So I'm going to say, write a Facebook ad with these requirements. So it came up with some pretty interesting text and I don't love it, but I think it's got some good ideas. So what I'm just gonna do is ask for a little bit more examples for a headline and description so I can pick and choose and maybe A-B test. Okay, so great, we've got a bunch of new ideas that we could test, and I'm not sure if this is exceeding the 30 character limit. Let's actually just ask it. So it's 40 characters. I believe we required it to do 30 characters or less. So the output is not going to be perfect, but again, this is an awesome way to just generate a bunch of ideas that you can go forward with some of them and get rid of the rest. Now that we have a Facebook ad, let's also generate a landing page for this product. Let's see what we can do. And it's giving me generic 
advice about creating a landing page, but I think maybe it thinks that I'm asking it to create the whole landing page and not just the text for the landing page. So I'm going to refine my question here and just say, generate landing page text for the same target persona. My experience now, as well as experience I've had in the past trying to get it to generate landing pages is that it reads more like a press release or a long form ad copy. So, you know, we do need to give it some more guidance to actually generate that landing page. So I'm going to generate that prompt now and we'll see how it goes. We can certainly nitpick at this landing page copy, but I think it's pretty good as a starting point. You can also ask ChatGPT to refine any of its responses. So, you know, if this wasn't enough, you can say regenerate, but focus the product description on a specific persona or make sure you include XYZ in the product description. So it is generally pretty intelligent, but again, really great starting point. Copywriters definitely still have a place in terms of copy editing and coming up with really creative copy, but for a lot of everyday copy generation, I think that this can serve as a very decent starting point. So enough about marketing the product, what about actually building the product? The thing is the product in this video I chose is a physical product, but I think that there are some aspects where ChatGP can, can help in the product development. So I'm just gonna ask it, tell me how to build this product and see what happens. What we're getting is pretty similar to the response that we got before about how will we go about developing this product not super insightful based on what we already know. And I wouldn't really expect it to know the ins and outs of product design and manufacturing. So what I'm thinking about doing is I know that ChatGPT is actually pretty good at generating code. So maybe we can ask it to help with some of the programming of the device. So I'm going to think about the temperature sensing component and I'm going to ask it to write some code for me. What's happening now is that ChatGPT is using OpenAI's Codex model, which is what is also used in GitHub Copilot to generate code examples. So we got example code that looks like Arduino code. I don't know if this is fully working, but on a first pass, I think it's a pretty good idea. It sets up the LEDs on which pins they're going to be on, as well as the temperature sensor. And then it sets the LEDs to output pins. And then within the loop, it's going to read the temperature and then it's going to convert that temperature to a voltage to get the right amount, both in Celsius and Fahrenheit. Maybe a bit overkill, but not a bad idea. And then it provides the pin modes for what's going to happen with, at each temperature. So basically if it's above 120, it's going to turn on red and the other two will be off. If it's below 70, it should turn on the blue one and it does, the other two are off. And then if it's good, it will be green and the other two will be off. So this is seemingly good code. We'd have to test it out for sure, but as a start, really not bad. Now that we have some basic Arduino code and presumably we would build a physical prototype and start getting it into the hands of users before we've actually manufactured it. What I'm gonna do now is talk about how ChatGPT can help with user testing and user research. So the first thing I asked ChatGPT was what user signal should I look for? It's giving me responses on ease of use, accuracy, comfort, design, and aesthetic, safety, materials, etc. I think that most of these are relevant. One thing I would say is that accuracy is probably something we should not ask the customer about. That's probably more on us to test because very few customers are going to have the tools or the willingness to test the accuracy. They just want to trust that it works correctly. But everything else is pretty insightful and would be really useful to have in a user survey. So why don't we ask ChatGPT to create a short user survey for us, but exclude the accuracy piece. So pretty good recommendations here. 
We're talking about comfort, design, safety, durability, easy to use, and recommendation to a friend. Maybe you could replace this with an NPS survey or ask ChatGPT to include NPS. It does understand that. I think this is a pretty good one. So just to test ChatGPT's contextual awareness, let's just ask it to create an example of a negative response to this survey. What's interesting about the results I'm getting here is that it's very negative and it's probably not actually reflecting of a real user. So I'm just going to refine my question and ask for a slightly negative response to the survey. This one is interesting because it's very neutral, even though I'm asking for somewhat negative. So I think I'm going to refine my question one more time and ask for some questions positive, some questions negative, overall response slightly negative. What's nice about this is it is listening to me. It said very safe, but again, it's giving some neutral responses for most of the other ones. It's not perfect, not exactly what you would expect from somebody generating responses, but just wanted to get an idea. You obviously wouldn't really use these survey results in your product development, but it's just interesting to know what the state of ChatGPT's contextual awareness is. And finally, what I'm gonna do is ask for metrics. And this is a really good way to understand how people are using the product. So let's see what ChatGPT comes up with. Okay, what it's spitting out is user satisfaction. I asked for a metric, not something qualitative. So, you know, you might want to replace this with an NPS survey or something along those lines. Temperature accuracy, I disagree with this. The customer should trust that it's going to be accurate. Why else would they buy the product? So I don't think that this should be here. I think for a physical product, return rate would be good. We probably should have specified to ChatGPT that this is an early stage product. We're not really worrying about the product returns yet, but it's pretty interesting that it came up with these ideas. So let me just clarify to ChatGPT that it's an early stage product and see what it comes up with. The results we're getting here are definitely more focused on the early stage, but they're not about metrics so succinctly. So I'm going to ask one more time for metrics and then give up if I don't get anything. All right, I'm giving up on this. It's not giving me specific metrics other than these two, engagement rate and NPS. So not really what I wanted, but at least it's giving me some good ideas. So that's the thing about ChatGPT. It's not perfect. A lot of the responses are not quite at the level that you would expect from a strong product manager or even a human, to be totally honest. But at the same time, the level of insight that it is providing is allowing us to more rapidly come up with ideas for products, come up with ideas for what we would do to test them, and even help us with the building of the product, such as generating code. So that's all really insightful. And I had also written a blog post that generally covered the same basic workflow, but it was for a completely different product. And what was interesting about writing that blog post was I started it on the December 15th version of ChatGPT. And then while I was writing the blog post that week, it actually updated to the January 9th version of ChatGPT. And some of the frustrations that I had with the December 15th version went away in the January 9th version. So things like providing more contextual responses, getting more precise and seeming to know more about what the user personas really cared about was one of the differences I noticed. It's still not at the level that you would need from a strong product manager. And none of this replaces talking to customers and doing direct user research. But at the same time, it is really insightful and a pretty cool glimpse of what's potentially coming down the road. Now, as a product manager or anyone involved in product management, I wouldn't be worried about losing your job. Honestly, this is just another tool in the toolbox that enables you to work faster and get more ideas. But this is just a small language model and it provides some contextual understanding, but ultimately it's going to rely on your experience, your technical skills, and your ability to manage a bunch of systems, a bunch of complexity to really build and launch a product. So I wouldn't be worried about this replacing your job anytime soon.
With that said, I'd love to know if you have tried ChatGPT for your product development workflow or if you've been thinking about it. What kinds of things would you ask for? How would you do it differently from what I did? I'd love to hear your ideas because honestly, it helps me become better at product development myself. That's going to be all for today. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that this is a pretty good idea of what ChatGPT can do. Unfortunately, I think it's gonna be a bit out of date quite soon, but at least some of the ideas should stand. So I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next one.